everyone. MLS Aces Podcast. We're back with another player interview. And right now we have Jalen Lindsay, standout young right back from Charlotte FC. Jalen, how are you? It's a, it's a pleasure to, to have you on and it's a pleasure to talk Charlotte FC. Oh, I'm good, man. Uh, I appreciate you having me on. And um, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, us talking. Well, you guys are coming off your first win of the season, right? That's always, I feel like that's always like a nice kind of just pressure to get off your back. How is the locker room vibes? How are your vibes right now after getting, you know, your first three points on the season? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the vibes now, obviously, especially how, you know, our first three games went, um, I think this kind of gave our group an extra bit of confidence and um, kind of gave us hope that like, you know, we can still do this and not like, you know, put ourselves down after the first three games and, yeah, the locker room is really good right now. I mean, it's always been really good. Um, obviously, the results haven't been there, but our locker room is usually really good. So, um, but yeah, I mean, I, for me as well, like I'm, I'm stoked, and you know, I'm excited to keep going with the team. Is there any difference that you're seeing early on between, I guess, what the 2023 locker room is looking like compared to 2022? Obviously, you know, there's different kind of events and different mindsets going on around it right now you have Latanzio's first full season as manager compared to where he was an interim manager and I guess there was more question marks about his future obviously the tragedy with Anton I'm sure that's still affecting the locker room and the guys and yourself like heavily and I, I couldn't even imagine what that pressure or what that kind of just pain is is like on a daily basis so is there any differences that you feel like is maybe kind of leading to a little bit of a struggle to start the season or is it just you know kind of early season struggles we'll get back into it yeah I think it's just more of like early season struggles I mean I mean to be fair like the first three games I think we I think it was kind of more just our fault and not you know the opposition you know playing better than us I mean mm -hmm. I think in all those games like we were the better you know, team at the end of the day, we just, you know, one just got maybe unlucky with some stuff and maybe they're just kind of like some casual errors that, yeah. you know, we made in our part. So, um, yeah, for sure. I think it's just more of just, you know, mental lapses that we've had in our part, but I mean, that's soccer at the end of the day, you, you, you live and you learn and that's all we have to do from now is, you know, learn from those losses. And, you know, obviously now we just got the win this past Saturday. So hopefully we can keep the momentum in the next couple of weeks. Obviously. I mean, I think that there, there's obviously some some mistakes you've seen on the field, some mental mistakes, whatever it may be. But like you said, that's soccer. Mistakes happen. And, yeah. and it, it's life, too. Right. You, you, you learn from your mistakes. And, and yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I don't want to harp on the point too much. But, you know, obviously the tragedy of losing Anton Walks is, is huge around the MLS world, around the Charlotte world and around you guys. Is there anything that, you know, like you guys are doing for him in his honor this season that, you know, maybe people around the league or the casual fan may not see? Uh, I mean, yeah, we, we put a big emphasis, you know, especially on Anton and, you know, obviously his life and how much, you know, he impacted our lives as well, like as teammates and obviously as coaches as well. Um, you know, we emphasize, you know, things that he said to like said about us, about our club, um, you know, obviously during our, our pitch at the training ground, we have, you know, a big number five for him and, yeah. um, you know, AW on the field at the training ground. So we know that he's always there with us at training every single day. And um, it's just little things like that, that, you know, gives us that reminder and, you know, lets you know us know mentally that, you know, he's still here with us um, and that he's going with us or going is going through this stuff with us as well. And um, there's just little things like that, that, you know, we're doing to kind of honor his, you know, legacy and stuff. From someone who's obviously not a player, not a coach, not involved with Charlotte or, or anything like that, I think the the TIFO and the celebration that was put up for Anton in, uh, in in to start the Atlanta United game was like absolutely special. Like had me kind of getting some goosebumps and stuff like that. From like you guys on the field, you guys see that. Like I don't know, does, does anything go through your mind of like kind of like holy crap, like that's special? No, not for me. Like I mean, for me personally, like it was really special when they brought the TIFO because. You know, obviously, that's just obviously two clubs that, you know, he played at and played a big role at. And, um, you know, obviously, Anton was a big figure for both clubs. And, um, you know, obviously, when the TIFO came up, I mean, I remember, you know, I looked at whoever was next to me. And I was just like, dude, like, this is amazing. Like, this yeah. is awesome. You know, like, it's like to, to honor him in that way, especially when in that type of game. I mean, it was just such a special moment just for everybody. 
shifting away from from I guess maybe some more sad stuff into the game this past weekend. Obviously, you know, it was a it was a great result, a great performance from you guys. And on top of things, you know, it was a great specific performance from you. From me watching the game and I, I rewatch at Major League Soccer games and probably taking too much MLS content at points. But you know, this seemed to be a really standout game from you. Obviously we'll we'll talk about the assist in a second, but did anything feel extra this past weekend? Because you look like you were playing on a whole other level um yeah i mean i think for me especially this season i mean i for me personally i had a strong you know preseason um you know obviously i didn't get any minutes the first three games which is totally okay like it is what it is like i just have to push the guys in front of me that you know obviously are playing and because at the end of the day we're you know one team and we want to win so it's we need everybody to be on the same mindset and kind of push each other so um but you know like when i got the call or not the call i would say but like when i got you know, told that I was going to start this weekend. Um, obviously, it's a bit of a confidence booster because that means to me that, like, you know, I'm doing something right, whether it's in training or, you know, off the field. And um, it was a really, you know, special moment for me because it was something that obviously I worked hard for as well as throughout preseason and the beginning of the season as well. Um, so I think kind of my extra motivation was like, look, we lost, you know, the first three games. You know, fans aren't really that happy. So mm -hmm. it's more it's more for us it was almost like we needed to win that game in order to, you know, change our season just a little bit. And, you know, obviously I know that's a long season, but that win just on Saturday was just a baby step. And I think that's my extra motivation to me. It was like, we have to win this game. Otherwise we're, you know, our, I guess our mental side of the game will just be going down and we'll be as, as a team will be deflated because, you know, you don't want to start the season 0 and 4 and, you know, obviously, you know, being at the bottom of the, yeah. the table of the standings. So I think that was my extra motivation for me. And, you know, hopefully I, I want to continue to have that kind of, you know, spirit throughout you know, every game throughout the rest of the season. So personally, like when I listen to like podcasts or, or content or anything like that, right? Like I like to listen to content that come from current players, former players, whatever it may be, because they just offer a completely different, um, I think, side of the, the game that us fans sometimes may overlook. And I think one of the big things that I constantly hear is the like the mental side of things, the locker room, like vibes in the locker room, like stuff like that really yeah. can change how a team is performing. When you guys, like you, you touched on it a little bit, you know, like the, the first three games of the season didn't go well Christian comes in and he says you know we're making up some shifts Jalen you're starting at right back George is getting the start in net um like how I guess does that change the vibes in that moment if it changes the vibes in that moment in the locker room or is it just like these are the changes this is what coach is telling us to do let's go see how this performs and then we'll kind of take it from there yeah I mean I think like we have a good group of guys I mean I think I would I wouldn't say anybody in our locker room is like selfish in a way or like yeah. you know mad about some stuff because I mean at the end of the day everybody does want to play everybody you know wants to contribute to the team um, but sometimes things change within the season that you know we kind of have to adapt to the situation so um, you know it's just things like that and everyone's just motivating each other in the same way I mean obviously the first three games for me like you know my kind of goal was obviously you know after the first one you know, we lost, you know, it's first game of the season, you know, whatever. We got to second game I and mean, we lost again, you know, third game. But all through that time period, it's like, you know, especially personally for me, you know, I have to keep pushing my teammates to be like, hey, like, yeah, you know, we, we got to keep going. Like, like try to try to figure things out because at the end of the day, if I sit there and try to dwell on myself and say like, oh, like I should be playing like, you know, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't know why he like that sends a bad vibe to the rest of the team. And, you know, especially with this win on Saturday, that goes to show you that we do have a locker room that is very supportive of everybody. It doesn't matter if, you know, people play the first three games and then don't play. Like, everyone has a contribution no matter what, whether it's in training or in the locker room. Um, so, I mean, especially with the changes that we've made, I mean, everyone's been super supportive, and that's a big thing in a locker room. Well, I mean, I think it's also easy to support when someone like yourself gets a ball at his feet, looks up and pings an absolute beautiful assist down the field to uh, the petty. So I want to ask quickly about it. Was that something like drawn up on, on you know, the practice field or was that just like you got the ball, you looked up, you saw McKenzie and Enzo running and you were like, I'm going to hit the crap out of this ball? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, like, I know mckenzie and enzo's tendency is like they're both runners that will, are willing to run in behind and yeah um in that case scenario i know like orlando was kind of like not i wouldn't say pressing us but 
Um, you know, they, they're playing a couple of good long balls that were kind of like pushing us back a little bit. And, um, you know, at that point, it's more of like, you know, me before I got the ball, I was like, look, I, I know Enzo's a runner. I know McKinsey's going to run it behind. You know what? I'm going to play this ball in a good position for them to, you know, obviously run onto it and kind of stretch yeah. Orlando out as well because they were kind of like, you know, pressing us a little bit. And that, I mean, obviously that ball for me, like I feel like obviously it's something that, you know, I – am you know happy about but i think that kind of changed the complexion of the game a little bit especially in that first half because yeah. then you know orlando kind of they kind of shift and they're like okay now we have to back up a little bit and be safe now you know what i mean so um it's just kind of one of those things where i wouldn't say maybe draw it up but it's in a sense of like it's just about knowing your players and like what their best capability is and i know enzo can run it behind mckenzie can run it behind and to try yeah. to put them those guys in the right positions is what we needed to do so I mean, look, I think it takes intelligence to understand how Orlando's playing it. And like you said, knowing the guys you have in front of you. And then also just the pure execution of, like, you hit that ball perfectly. And obviously, you trust an Enzo or a McKenzie to finish that. And they did. And and like you said, you changed the complexion from uh, of the game from that point on. Um, so, I mean, congratulations on the win. Absolutely amazing. I think it's it, this, thank this you, thank TV. You from a fan kind of seems like a game or a win or just a momentum swinger type of deal. Like you said, right. Maybe you get those positive vibes back in the locker room pack in the, in the training grounds. And then things kind of just build on it from here because you guys do have a very talented squad, but I want to kind of talk about you really quickly because you've always been an interesting player to me. You've been around for so long. I feel like in my brain, but you're only 22, you're turning 23 soon, I think. So happy birthday. Yeah, um, but how does it feel to almost be like, like still technically, I guess the kid in the locker room, but you're like a veteran still at its own point. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just about finding that balance, you know, like obviously with my age, you can look at me and be like, Oh yeah, he's a young kid. Like, but like at the same time, like this is my sixth year in the league. So it's like, it's like, I have that experience already kind of yeah. builds up already. Um, so like, that's how, how I kind of am in the locker room. Like I kind of want to be that guy you know, for those younger guys that are coming in, maybe their first year or they're coming from college, like, and kind of like be that kind of like anchor to be like, they can adapt easily, you know, within the team and with their experience as well. And just kind of like, you know, be there for them. Cause I know how it is to be sometimes, you know, a rookie, like sometimes you go from, you know, you're playing, let's say for example, you're playing every minute, you're the guy in college or you're the guy at the academy. And then you get to the first team and you think like, you can kind of just like work your way right in the starting lineup, but it's not that way because there's, you know, 18 or like 20 other guys that yeah. are probably even better than you or have better attributes than you. So it's, it's about, for me, like I see it in two ways. Like I have to be that guy that can kind of help them make them understand, like, look, this is what you're going to go through. You know, how are you mentally, you know, going to push yourself when the backs against the wall type stuff. And so I'm kind of there to give them advice or whatnot. And also at the same time, I'm also there to be, you know, helpful to maybe some of the older guys that aren't used to the league. Like, you know, for example, like giving advice to, you know, either, you know, on our team, like Ashley Westwood or like Nathan Byrne or like, you know, other guys that are kind of technically veterans, but haven't been in the league that long. It's about telling them like, you know, these are certain players you'd watch out for. Like, yeah. this is how they play like a certain team, play, like a certain play style. Like, so like, for example, like this weekend, like, you know, it's about telling those guys, like, this is how Red Bulls plays. Like they're a high pressing team. Like we have to watch out you know, what we're going to do, you know, to kind of exploit them a little bit. So um, it's, it's about just finding that balance. And I, I just kind of like that role because it's like, like, like you said, like I'm still kind of like a kid a little bit, but at the same time, like I have the experience. So, um, you know, it's, it's a good little balance, but I'm enjoying it so far. So. I mean, look, I think you you said that perfectly because, like, right, like, going back to your time at SKC, you were sitting behind a true MLS veteran and a Graham Zussi, right? I'm, I'm yeah. a guy who I'm sure you've learned so much from, yeah. and now you're coming to a role in Charlotte where, yeah, Nathan Byrne is still a veteran of the game, but he's new to Major League Soccer, so now you're teaching him a little bit, too. Like, yeah, you yeah. can teach me, but I'm going to teach you as well. So I'm sure it's a very unique position, but I'm sure it's also, like, a cool position to kind of be in for yourself. Oh, yeah, for sure. I mean, like I, like I said, I, I enjoy it every single day like i'm still there to give the young guys crap and you know <laughs> obviously at the same time give them advice but um you know i'm kind of just there to you know obviously i want to help the team as much as possible and kind of be close to everybody as much as i can just to kind of keep the team gelling together a little bit so so you said it and i'll finish things up uh, for this conversation here with kind of red bulls next week so 
you know, like you said, Red Bulls press, we know that we know energy drink, uh, energy, energy drink style soccer. And obviously Red Bulls are coming out, you know, Dante Van Zier, their new DP striker winger, whatever he's playing at Red Bull, you know, he's coming off a game winning goal as well. When you guys look at the Red Bulls, you know, how do you guys defensively prepare for that? How do you prepare for a team that's going to just press the hell out of you for, for 90 minutes? Yeah. So, I mean, I wouldn't say anything. It's about tactics. It's just about, you know, it's more about us kind of playing our game, playing kind of our possession based, um, you know, possession based to like, you know, obviously direct attack um, style of football. So um, it's just about kind of keeping our style of play as usual, but it's also about, about staying calm. Like we, like we know they're going to come press, but it's just all about just staying calm and just kind of moving the ball around mm -hmm. and make them chase a little bit because one, it's an advantage because they're playing away from home. So that gives us an advantage a little bit with the fans. And, you know, obviously, too, with like our play style, like, I mean, we did it last year. We beat them at home last year, I think, 2-0. Um, so it's about kind of doing that same thing again and just staying calm in that game. We, you know, I think we outplayed them by a mile. And we we, we played really, actually, really so well. So um, it's just about keeping the ball, moving the ball, and just kind of being just confident and, you know, being calm. My final question for you, Red Bulls are pressing. They're, they're maybe that back line's inching up a little bit too much. Do we get another Jalen Lindsay just banger from deep to <laughs> Uh You know, I mean, like, it, obviously, it's, if it's, it's there, it's there. Uh, <laughs> but just, we'll, we'll just see how the play plays out. But, uh, you know, obviously, I'm hoping, uh, you know, to kind of get on that contribution, you know, sheet again. And um, that's what I want to continue to do. So, um, you know, hopefully I can get more throughout the season. So we'll see. Jalen, thank you so much, man, for coming on and talking a little soccer with me today. I uh, appreciate you, man. Thank